In today's video, I want to show you how to set up from start to finish your first drip campaign inside of Address 2. First thing, and I will be referencing many other support videos as we go through uh, the basic setup of a quick and easy drip campaign. First thing you need to do is click on marketing and or dashboard to get to your marketing dashboard. Address 2 needs to know who you want those emails to come from. So if you scroll down at the very bottom of your marketing dashboard, on the left, you set up your sender profiles. For this example, I'll be using two specific profiles. One is my info profile, and the other one is Troy's sales profile. My drip campaigns, two of the three emails, I want to come from the team at Address 2. And then one particular email where I personally introduce myself as your helper at address two, I want to make sure that that comes from address or from Troy at address two. In my sender profile here, I have the team, I have my URL, I have my logo. Uh, again, that's why um, I have two different profiles set up. And this will make a lot more sense as you see my drips that I've set up. First thing again, set up your sender profile. The second thing, back under that same marketing dashboard, Personally, I like to set up my three email drips here so that I can test them first. For future or for um, references on how to use and build a template inside of Address 2, see our other support videos uh, here on our support blog. I set up those emails specifically under the template builder so that I can test them to myself so that I make sure that mail merge features, signature features, and clickable URLs work correctly inside of that drip campaign. So again, step two is to set up the templates here. I'll very quickly show you how to uh, test one of those emails. And again, I highly recommend testing all three in this particular example. To test, I like to add myself as a contact and go to my account card. In my account card here, again, I'm using my address to account where I'm a contact in my address to account. I go click the down arrow here and I say, I wanna email that contact. Our step one in our email process will appear where you'll see that the contact has already been added in search results. I push that contact over to make sure that they're a recipient and I proceed to step two, our email design. Under our email design, I select day one email drip. I like to just put in number one. I select the profile so that I can test that profile that I set up to make sure that A, when somebody, when I email myself, it's going to say Troy. B, that when I email, that signature is associated with that sender profile. I hit send email, and I wait for that email to appear in my inbox. Again, when it appears in my inbox, and unfortunately my inbox is closed at the moment, I make sure that spacing is correct. I make sure that my clickable links work. I make sure that my first name appears here, and then the info at profile, it'll say the team at address two appears here. If I see any fixes, like for instance, in the one email that I had, um, the spacing was just a little off here. Instead of hitting return, I hit shift return to single space it. Again, make sure to test all three of those emails that you want to set up in this particular example for, again, making sure that the links work, the mail merge features work, etc. Now that I've tested all three emails, step three is to set up the campaign. Under the marketing dashboard, You'll see your templates, your stats, your outbox, et cetera. But then under my marketing dashboard here at the, in the middle, on the left, you'll see campaigns. I click the plus button here to say, hey, this is number one. So that it appears first. Um, test three day drip. I'm going to put number two here so that I know. Actually, I'm going to try to put one A so that it appears. I can choose who has read permissions and write permissions to um, edit this campaign. I hit save and it's going to take me to my campaign editor where I have to set up the sequence of events. And here I hit the plus button here to say, hey, I want the first thing that happens to be an email. I hit go. Personally, and this is also why I really prefer to set up my templates first and then set up my campaign so that I can go in and say, hey, that first email drip, I select it so that I can figure out what subject line to put in. So this first words is thank you for registering. So I'm gonna go in here and put in as my email subject, thanks for checking out address to.com. That's why I've had the template 
I choose the profile. Again, my first email, it comes from the team, and I set my delay. For this example, I want day zero, day one, and day two. In other words, if I was to execute this campaign on a Monday, immediately that email would go out when I said execute it. So for this example, it's 4.46 p.m. On a, on a Wednesday. If I hit send on my campaign, the first email would go out immediately at approximately 4.46 p.m. on a Wednesday. My second email would go out at 4.46 p.m. on a Thursday. And my third email would go out at 4.47 p.m. on a Friday. So I hit, that one goes out. And then subsequently I add my, once I've set that campaign, excuse me, let me go back here and just set one for you. Uh, thanks for checking out a two, a one from that profile. I hit save and it's gonna show the first email in that series. I just hit plus button here. I want day two, or excuse me, technically what would be one day later. That second email to go out, I'm Troy at address two, and I love to help people with CRM, right? So then I hit save, days one, or day zero, one, and two. I'm going to close this because I already actually have that campaign created down here in my campaign dashboard. Do, 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 do. Test campaign from three email drips. Again, thank you for registering comes from the sender profile info at so that when it comes from info at it says the team at address two. Day one, technically the next day email comes from Troy because this says I want to introduce myself. I'm not going to introduce myself as the team. I want that signature to come from Troy at address two. So that's why I have separate sender profile set up for this example. So that's the three email drips that I have set up. Again, to go over it, today is Wednesday, May 2nd, 2018. If I was to execute this drip, immediately that email goes out. Today at Wednesday at 4.49 p.m. Tomorrow, Thursday at 4.49, approximately 4.49 p.m., the second email from Troy comes out. And then Friday at 4.49 p.m., May 4th, get a free get free CRM training, goes out at 4.49 p.m. So that's the 0, 1, 2. There are three ways to execute a campaign inside of Address 2. First is manual. So if I go to a contacts record, I'm going to pick on, who can I pick on here? I'm going to pick on Mr. Justin Weeks. I'm in a campaign card here. I have Shane and uh, Justin. I first need to make sure that Justin has actually um, opted in to receive my emails. I go down in the campaign or in the contact card to the campaign section here and manually add that person. So right now it has Justin, or if I wanted to add Shane, I could do that. In this case, Justin gets the test three email drips campaign from that sender profile. And again, if I execute it today, today is Wednesday, May 2nd at approximately 450 days, uh, excuse me, z email zero goes out immediately. Tomorrow, Thursday, email one goes out at 450. And again, Friday at 450 p.m., email three goes out. Or if it makes better sense, I can execute it on Monday, I can choose my time, so send this out at 8.30 a.m. Monday, they get day zero email. Tuesday, they get technically number one or day two email. And then Wednesday, they get email number two, technically day three email. That's manually triggering a campaign. The next way is also manual, but it's as if I've uploaded a new list of people that I met at a business expo that I'm got business cards from. I go to my list that I've uploaded in. Let's just call it the Brehob list. I have 128 records in this particular list. I can then, if I want to add all 128 people to that particular drip series, I scroll down to the very bottom of this list 
And you can do the same under query as well, by the way. But all 128 people in this list, I can go and say, uh, um, excuse me, send an email. I want them to get my three day drip email. I want it to come from that sender profile. I can unqueue from other campaigns. I can set my execution date, hit execute, and all immediately on a Wednesday, May 2nd, around 4.50 p.m., all 128 people get day zero email. That's how to manually um, add everybody on a list to a drip campaign. The third and final way is through our web form creator. There's other tutorial videos on how to create web forms, but to show you briefly how to trigger a drip email series from a web form, I first create the web form, tell the web form what information I want to capture, and then what should happen when that person fills it out. So when that person fills out the form, number one, the users of the system, Jill and Troy, get notified that somebody filled out that form via email. Second thing is that person gets added to a list. And then the third thing, when that person has gone through and filled out this information and hit submit, they immediately get that day zero email. Doesn't matter what time they fill it out. Um, so if it is one o'clock in the morning, every day at one o'clock in the morning, they will get that email uh, for day zero, one, and two. So, that is how to very quickly um, and briefly, if you will, set up a three-day marketing drip inside of Address 2. Now you can take that drip and expand it to every seven days. So for a month, you know, every seven days, somebody's gonna get an email from you. You can also expand that to not only do they get an email, but let's just dive in just a little bit further here to maybe every day you send them an email, the next day you want to give them a call. So I'll pull up this, um, three-day marketing drip here, that one there, and I'll expand this to, hey, let's do uh, every day for three weeks. So, right, so day zero, they get that first one, then they get another one, and then they get another one. I can subsequently say, hey, call these people. So I can add a task series to that drip. Email zero went out yesterday call this lead to make sure they got the email assign it to the account manager or your caller and i want this one to go out on day one another task here second email in lead list went out yesterday all this lead to make sure they got it i can assign it to a call manager or the account manager i'm going to, in this case i'm going to assign it to myself this one's going to go for day 15. and then the third and final action is i want to schedule that final call so i'm going to say final email in three week drip series went out yesterday. Call them, assign it to the myself, and that's gonna be on day 22. But now you see here that first thing that happens when I, when I trigger a campaign is immediately they get the email, the next day, I get a task on my task dashboard to call them. Seven days later, they get an email. The next day, they get an email. So what do I do here? I can always go back and fix things. 22. Uh, two, two, two. So that's not 22. That's day eight. Excuse me. Let's save that so you can see it in more of a the right way. So day zero, they get an email. The next day I get a task to call that lead. A week later they get an email. The next day, so a week from the last call I made to them, I get a task to call that lead. Two weeks later, they get an email. The next day, which would technically be day 15, I get a task to call that lead. 
Um, and so that's how to actually kind of do a workflow and in, inside of your drips as well. If you have any questions, need help, would like an extra eye for us to check out your first drip campaign inside of Address 2, email support at address2.com and we'd be happy to help any way we can. Thanks for watching. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call. We'd love to help.